Ladies and gentlemen, the presiding officer for today's ceremony is Brigadier General William E. Cole, the senior commander of the Native Soldier System Center and the deputy commanding general of the United States Army Research, Development, and Engineering Command. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Brigadier General Cole. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today as we honor Justin Fitch, recognize the tremendous impact that he has made on our lives, as well as the lives of veterans around the country, and as we celebrate his Army career. Now, Justin's going to give you his own story, but I want to give you a little bit of background about Justin's career in the military. Now, he started off as an infantryman in the 25th Infantry Division in Hawaii, and he served as a platoon leader during a very long 14 month, over 14 month deployment to Iraq, first as the leader of a rifle platoon and then ending as the leader of a mortar platoon. After returning from that deployment, he was transferred to the Adjutant General's Corps from the infantry where he started. And after some schooling, he was assigned to the 5th Special Forces Group, specifically the 1st Battalion where he served as the personnel officer. And he again deployed to Iraq supporting the Green Berets. When he got back from uh, Iraq on his, that second deployment, he uh, luckily for us was transferred here to Native Soldier Systems Center and took over as the company commander of the HRDD detachment, the Headquarters Research Development Detachment that we have here at Natick. Now as an adjutant general officer, most of those captains do not get to command, but luckily for us and luckily for Justin, it's well deserved. And uh, we're very glad to have him here. And his service here at Natick has been truly exemplary, both on and off duty. Along with First Sergeant Gemmell and your other NCOs, Justin, you've greatly improved the training that we give to our human research volunteers, young soldiers just starting their career. You set a great example for them. And off duty, your work as a leader in the Carry the Fallen Charity <coughs> has received national attention and has made a difference in calling attention to the issue of veteran suicide and providing support to vets suffering from post-traumatic stress as well as their families. Justin makes quite an impression on people and not just because he is tall and handsome. <laughs> During this ceremony, you will hear from a few other speakers who will share with you their Justin Fitch stories. And if you listen, I think you will find that the common threads through the stories are about Justin are his selflessness, his modesty, and his relentless determination. And we are also joined here today by Justin's wife, Samantha. Now, Samantha, we know that spouses also serve, and I thank you for your dedication and devotion to Justin and to the Army. Thank you so much. Okay, Justin, although you've only been in the Army for about 10 years, you've had more of an impact than most soldiers who have served for 20 or 30 years. We're all touched by your complete dedication to soldiers and to veterans. And I thank you for your devotion to Samantha as a husband and for your service to soldiers in our Army and for your continued dedication as a veteran to other veterans across our nation. Thank you, Justin, and well done. Sir, it's not for me to um, question the abilities of a field grade officer trying to find somebody. <laughs> so I walked away in shame. But no, I funny track him down, but those those 30 days of searching for him, everybody's, do you know Justin Fitch? Do you know Justin Fitch? Have you heard about <coughs> Justin Fitch? You have to know about Justin Fitch. John sends me a ton of documents about what he's written about Justin Fitch. And I got to tell you, everything that was told me wasn't right. Because he's better. <laughs> the stories that were told to me, he's better. So um, that's a good news story. Um, let me tell you, there's nothing happens by chance. 
And I really believe that. I'm a faith-based person. I believe in God, but I'm not up here pushing it, and I'm not trying to take Chapel's job. <laughs> but things happen for a reason. And Justin came here for a reason. And, and you'll hear you're from the general, and you'll hear Collier, and that's why I'm not going to speak that, because you don't want to hear three briefings of exactly the same thing. <coughs> that's another reason why I didn't research other briefings, because I didn't want to have to get into the general or Collier's hard drive and then be conflicted by plagiarism, see, so that it's all original thought. Um, Justin personifies Army values. He leads by example. He does the right things. In speaking with him, he would tell me things like, you know, sir, I was a colorful word, colorful word, word lieutenant. And I said, no, you weren't. And you've never be, been, and you never will be, because you were willing to listen. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Let's pursue that. Listen to the platoon sergeant. Listen to the squad leader. They're there for a reason. That's why he is who he is. That's why he performs so well. It doesn't just happen. Things happen for a reason. I believe that. Um, we chatted a couple times, actually a lot. We find as soldiers, we're drawn to what we know. So you know soldiers, you go to them, you speak with them because we have something in common. And then we break out and then <coughs> attack by fire and talk to people in the different directorates, only to go back to a soldier to recheck the asthma. And that's, Justin is one of my sounding boards. So now I get to beat up the new company commander. <laughs> we'll see how well, he, how well he does. But anyway, Justin, <coughs> when you see everything he's done and everything he's going to do, we use the word retirement. And I was thinking about retirement. When a race car goes into the pits, generally they retire. <laughs> they put new tires on because they want to win the race. That's not a bad word. Justin is living proof that the Army training system works. We take somebody, we run them through the grinder. They're better off now than they were. We retire them, give them new life, and we put a one percenter that came in back out into the community. That's a one percenter. The one percenters are the ones that allow everybody else in this world to do whatever they want to do. But the one, one percenters, it's you guys. Everybody aware of this, it's you guys. We're willing to give up rights so everybody else can do what they want to do. And Justin will continue to live and be that person. And what a great new story. And we've had the luxury <coughs> to live and know Justin. And I've had the luxury to know him for, what's four threes, 120 days. And I'm a better person. And I think we all are. And uh, we will continue to track you. John will track you. <coughs> BAO, you know only better things are going to happen. Isn't that great? He's going to go out and people are going to want to be like him. I want to join the Army. I want to be like Justin Fitch. The Army cannot ask for anything more better than that. And that's what you get from somebody who gets retired. So think about that. This is a good news story. This is a good news story. This is a super day. And Sam, you're a part of that. You're a part of the reason that happened. And that's a big deal. That doesn't happen. Not everybody gets that sort of support. And you're super, and I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of both. Anyway, I need to turn this over to John. This first sergeant's got a big book that he's going to put on me and throw me up the stage. Captain Fitch, good afternoon. I am honored to be here. I am honored to participate in this ceremony. But Justin, I don't know if you remember when we first met. I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he'll attribute it to chemo brain. Yeah. yeah. No, I do. It was 6 June 2013. I was on permissive TY to NATO to prepare for my move in July. Now, those of you who know Justin know exactly where we met. The guesses? Well, you know, North End Lounge, right there at the bar. <laughs> like many movie bar scenes, we compared scars. 
Well, yours was actually kind of a raw incision still, but it was about 10 times as large as my hernia scar. So yeah, you won that competition. And I, I don't know if I bought you that drink. If I didn't, then right after this, I'll get that for you, all right? <laughs> and those of you who know Justin also know that he can be very frank. He speaks his mind. And we call this his fitchiness. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little fitchy right now. I'm going to be blunt. At our first meeting, Justin, I would have bet money, big money, that we would not be here today on the 4th of December 2014 retiring and then promoting you. It just didn't seem possible. Actually, very impossible. But as I have gotten to know you, I have learned not to bet against you. I've never met a more determined, driven, stubborn person than you. You are a Fitchburg, <laughs> a mountain of Fitch, <laughs> immovable at times. When you combine your determination with a deep, deep sense of responsibility, a love of soldiers and soldiering, and your rare selflessness, you get the Captain Fitch that we all respect and admire. You get the Captain Fitch who is doing everything, everything in his power to insert a very, very <coughs> old minus sign between the two twos and 22 to zero out veteran suicide. Now I'm sure that each one of you could tell a story or two or ten that would depict how truly unique Justin is and how he's touched your life. But time is limited, so here's just one story. I had the opportunity to walk the last mile or so with Justin during his first Carry the Fallen Ruck March in November of 2013. It was dark. He was beat, really, really beat. We were all worried that he had pushed too hard. He was literally shuffling. I mean, he'd been rucking for more than 12 hours, more than 12 hours, but he was unwilling to give in. We offered rides, we offered rest stops, but he just kept going. But a couple blocks from the finish line, downtown Boston, he reached into his pocket, well, first he stopped, and he reached into his pocket and pulled out some bills. And he bent down and put it into the cup of the homeless person who was sitting on the sidewalk. I stood there completely dumbfounded. He turned, shuffled away, and the homeless person called out, thank you. I mean, that simple, simple gesture, very genuine, genuine gesture of this selfless person is a Justin that we all know. This is the Justin who inspires us and also surprises us each and every day. And Justin, you're a leader. You're always mentoring, teaching, challenging in your own quiet way. Now, when we reached the finish line during the St. Ruck March in November 13, Justin dropped to his knees, kissed the finish line with the other ruckers who were still there, and moved off to the side, and while still on the ground, he read a poem. He read the poem out loud to the team. And the poem was The Man in the Glass by Peter Dale Wimbo. So Justin, as you finish this race, as you cross this finish line of sorts, I'd like to read that poem again. The Man in the Glass. When you get what you want in your struggle for self, and the world makes you king for the day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what the man has to say. For it isn't your father, your mother, or your wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts the most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you, clear to the end. And you pass your difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on your back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you <coughs> cheated the man in the glass. Your determination, selflessness, and example challenges each of us every day to look in the mirror and to not cheat that person in the glass. So, uh, Justin, in his very fitchy, kind of reluctant hero way, asked 
that I not inflate his ego in my remarks. <laughs> well, I won't. I'm not going to use my own words to do that. I want to use the words of a young admirer, Ty Eliasson, who four days ago posted a comment on your Facebook page. He was commenting in response to your post in which you wished that you were doing something badass now, like the soldier depicted in this Hua picture that was there. So, young Ty posted this. He said, he wrote, you being you is freaking awesome enough, Mr. Fitch. You are an inspiration to us all. My dad says that if you're going to do something, no matter what it is, give it 110%, then it would be better than anyone could have expected. And I'm sure that you do that in all that you do as well. Because you radiate awesomeness. In a moment here, we're going to give Justin uh, his retirement award. We have a lot of things to give Chris. This is the first one. But Justin's getting the Meritorious Service Medal. And some people think that. Awards like medals are given based on rank. And if you think that, you probably think, gee, MSMs are all like field grade officers. But actually, that's, that's not correct. Uh, the Army gives awards based on the impact that a soldier's had. So we've had privates get the Medal of Honor and Silver Stars for Medal. Because if you're, no matter what rank, if you're in the right place at the right time, you have an impact, you get that kind of award. Now, this is a, a service award. And again, normally, soldiers that are only in the Army for 10 years don't make the impact merit of meritorious service time, but just as you have, and uh, that's why we're honored to be able to award you this. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh, please rise. Attention to orders. The United States of the America, to whom all shall see these, present greetings. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Executive Order 16 January 1969, has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal to Captain Justin M. Fish, U.S. Army Research, Development, and Engineering Command, for exceptionally meritorious service as Commander, Headquarters, Research and Development Detachment, Navy Soldier Research, Development, and Engineering Command, in critical areas of soldier testing. Under his leadership, the mission critical support to his soldiers ensured that warfighters continue to have the very best kit and equipment needed to execute missions and complete tasks, setting the standard for all to emulate. Captain Fitch's achievements, dedication, and exemplary performance of duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the U.S. Army Research Development and Engineering Command, <coughs> and the United States Army. From 31 January 2012 to 10 December 2014, signed John F. Wharton, Major General, United States Army Commanding. Please be seated. General Cole will now present a certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States. The certificate received reads, for service in the armed forces of the United States, Captain Justin M. Fitch, United States Army, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Your commitment and dedication have been an inspiration for all of those who will follow in your footsteps, and for all Americans who join me today in saluting you for a job extremely well done. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Barack H. Obama, Commander-in-Chief.
Ladies and gentlemen, General Cole will now present a certificate of appreciation from General Odierno to Captain Fitch's wife, Samantha. The certificate reads, to all who shall see these presents greeting, Mrs. Samantha M. Walker, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse to the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding help make, your, make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, so Raymond T. Odierno, General, United States Army Chief of Staff. <laughs> General Cole will now present her with the Department of Army Commander's Award for Public Service. The certificate reads, the Department of the Army, Samantha Marie Walk for her outstanding dedication, support, and selfless service to the U.S. Army Natick Soldier Research Development and Engineering Center. Her untiring and devoted efforts enabled her husband, Captain Justin Fitch, to effectively perform his duties throughout his career, culminating as a commander, headquarters, <laughs> research and development detachment. In addition, her additional contributions and commitment assisting veterans of every service branch are in keeping with the highest traditions of service to the United States of America and reflect great credit upon her, the United States Army Research Development and Engineering Command, and the Department of the Army. Signed, William E. Cole, Brigadier General, United States Army Commanding. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Justin Matthew Fitch. In view of these qualities and demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he has been selected for promotion to major, and his eligibility for promotion has been confirmed by the Senate. Attention to orders. From the Department of the Army, Justin Matthew Fitch, effective 29 January 2015. You are retired from active duty, released from assignment and duty, and on the date following, placed on the retired list in the grade of major. The people of the United States express their thanks and gratitude for your faithful service. Your contributions to the defense of the United States of America are greatly appreciated by order of the Secretary of the Army. gentlemen, a bouquet of flowers are being presented to Samantha in honor of her dedication, love, and support to her husband. <laughs> the list continues. <laughs> a certificate of retirement to Major Fitch. <clears throat> the certificate reads, from the Armed Forces of the United States of America, to all who shall see these presents greeting. This is to certify that Major Justin Matthew Fitch, Army Adjutant General Corps, having faithfully served and honorably is retired from the United States Army on the 29th day of January 2015, signed Raymond T. Odierno, General, United States Army Chief of Staff. At this time, General Cole will present Major Fitch with two separate and unique flags of the United States of America. Old Glory is our fond and most precious name for our mighty flag. 
The first flag is Major Finch's retirement flag. The flag symbolizes his service and the many sacrifices he has willingly and gladly given to our greatest of nations so that we may live freely, prosper, and truly experience the American way of life. The second flag to be presented was flown over the Lexington Battle Green in honor of Major Fitch. The Certificate of Authenticity reads, This American flag is presented to Captain Justin Matthew Fitch in recognition of nearly 10 years of service to this nation in the United States Army. This is to certify that on 26 November 2014, the town of Lexington, Massachusetts, flew this American flag over the Lexington Battle Green, the birthplace of American liberty, and on the site of America's oldest war memorial, where the Lexington Minuteman Militia confronted the British Army on April 19, 1775 in the opening shots of the American Revolution. Signed, Joseph N. Pato, Chairman, Lexington Board of Select. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, General Cole will now present Major Fitch with his company guide on. A guide on is the military standard that company or platoon size elements carry to signify their unit designation or core affiliation. The significance of the guide on is that it represents the unit and its commanding officer. The guide on is the rallying point for troops to fall into formation when the order is given. In drill and ceremonies, the guide on and commander are always in front of the formation. The guide on is a great source of pride for the unit. Several military traditions have developed around it, stemming back from ancient times. Any sort of disgrace toward the guide on is considered a dishonor of the unit as a whole, and punishment is typical. Other units may attempt to steal the guide on to demoralize or antagonize the unit, but veteran soldiers know not to give up the guide on to anyone outside of their unit. Uh, Dr. Baker, 
Um, the former director, Dr. Busick, who's here, which is a pleasure to see. Uh, Colonel Hillman, re retired Colonel Hillman. Colonel Slade, you know, and, he's, and Colonel May. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Don Ray as well, and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Greta, I think. And Lieutenant Colonel Poppenberg, Sergeant Major Osele, and uh, Eccles. Very good to see you all here today. Who else did I? I probably, if I missed someone, you know, I'm sorry. I uh, don't always have the best situational awareness. I'll do my best. All right. I would like to know that I appreciate that every single one of you are here spending time to see me off in the official, traditional Army way. Uh, you could be catching up on work, working to get home early, but you're here. Some of you traveled and underwent a pretty thirty, thorough security check through the gate to get here. Um, to see you all here today makes me happy and humbles me. Thank you. It is going to be a challenge for me to get through this, but dry I left. Um, I also tend to, anyone that knows me, I ramble on and on, rant and go on wild tangents that don't really make any sense that are pertinent. <laughs> so I actually took the time to type all this out and uh, I hope that helps save some of your time and attention. Almost sticking to it too, almost. Um, by the time that I'm officially retired, for pay and other reasons, which is very soon. I will have served nine years and eight months. I was hoping to say I was act to be able to say I was active for ten full years, but come come December eleventh, I start terminal leave and uh, I am no longer required to wear the uniform of, a, of an active duty soldier. Yet I can wear it when there's uh, official approved activities. Um, and January 30th is when I am officially a retired civilian, well, retired army, but, you know, civilian. Um, with all the rights and privileges pertaining to being a civilian, such as yelling at kids to get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, apparently sh making sure I get to the market early on Thursdays to beat the, the rush of people that go and get the good meats. <laughs> um, by those times, I will no longer care uh, about that couple months. This right here is it. It's my last chance to make any difference as an active duty soldier. Before I explain that, I'd like to publicly thank General Coles, General Hughes, General McGinnis, retired Dr. Music, Dr. Baker, even though some of them aren't here right now, and Director Baker, uh, for allowing me the dignity to to continue leading soldiers despite my significant health complications as the commander of the Research and Development Detachment. I'd like to thank you for supporting my command decisions and entrusting and empowering my first sergeant in my absence. I'd like to thank you for going above and beyond to take care of me in any way you possibly could concerning the impacts of my cancer, my ongoing treatments, and my medical re retirement transition. I know it has not been easy, and I do not take your genuine care and concern lightly. I'd like to publicly thank uh, retired Colonel Hillman back there in the civilian suit. Um, from the moment he got back from Afghanistan, uh, I was in the hospital. And uh, it seemed every time I was in the hospital, he checked up on me nearly every single day. He built his schedule, made it happen. Even when I wasn't in the hospital, he would check up on me. And a great deal to see him take that extra effort to visit me uh, bedside when I was in a pretty low point. And uh, as well, he brought my wife uh, more dessert from Cheesecake Factory than she could possibly ever consume. <laughs> and uh, meant a lot to us. He treated me like, treated me better than your soldiers, sir. He treated me, and he continued to treat me like a friend and brother. Thank you. Also, I'd like to thank Colonel Retired Slade. You also inherited a sick commander. Uh, you made sure I didn't do anything stupid and kept an eye on me, always looking out for, me, out for me. When I said I was going to do something stupid, like defy my doctor's orders for a good cause, yet you supported me. You supported me on my current mission, 
which is arguably one of the most important things I'll ever do in my life. One of them. You empowered me and allowed me to keep going, to keep fighting. And um, your wife, Teika, has accepted me and Sam as friends and has been kind to us. I was honored to have you speak today, um, especially having traveled to get down here. And thank you for treating me like a brother. <coughs> Colonel May, uh, from day one you have been turbocharged. I genuinely respect your hard charger method. <coughs> Despite your atomic power of nature, you have provided me just what I needed in the past few months of my time here. Liberty, protection, and room to get the personal affairs of my wife and myself in order to execute one of the most bureaucratically confusing tasks on this planet. <laughs> Medical retirement. You also treated me like a brother. It's a common theme. I know you will continue to do great things for the director here when I'm gone and provide stellar leadership for my replacement. Who is here today? Uh, this is strange because uh, I'm getting kind of a weird timeline out, and he's not even officially here, he's on leave. Uh, Captain Eric Enrique Gurriel, right here. This guy's my replacement. I have no doubt. I have no doubt that he's going to do good things for the detachment. Um, seems to be a guy that cares, and seems competent, professional. And, um, sorry I couldn't give you an official change of command, sir. I know you really just love all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, first, I'm gonna get you squared away. Don't you worry. <laughs> All right, back to back to the script. Where did I go? All right. Sorry, I haven't seen a senior moment. Um, yeah, I also uh, like to thank Colonel Sobchak for being here today. You know, former former garrison commander. I appreciate some of your mentorship guidance. Um, Fun times, training, uh, training, marksmanship training, familiarization, and uh, mostly I appreciated sharing uh, war stories about her, about uh, first battalion. That was uh, good. I also, thank you to uh, Colonel Don Ray, who showed up today, which was a big surprise to me. He's the deputy commander of Fifth Special Forces Group Airborne, and uh, because the commander is forward right now and he's actually the commander of the rear element so it's a big responsibility for him to make the time to take a trip out here it meant a lot to me today. I hold the time I spent as a S1 personnel staff officer for 1st Battalion, 5th Group very close to my heart. And I look back at those days with great nostalgia and pride, pride to have worked for and with some of the best soldiers in the nation. To have someone from a group of your position <coughs> receiving responsibility here today means a great deal to that. It means a great deal to me. Also, uh, Darren Wisniewski, Wisniewski, I know I've messed that up and butchered it every time I've talked to you. I'm sorry. Um, thank you for making the trip here as well. Uh, through uh, your position in the SOCOM Care Coalition, you have a uh, also helped support and provide me world-class care, uh, effort and concern. And also, it's, uh, as a friend, it's good to see you here. Important, I'd like to thank you, Miss Ann Atkins. Um, she traveled from Kentucky, was it today? Montgomery, Alabama. Oh, yes, I thought, but you were in Georgia too, right, for a while? Yeah. Um, she's a gold star mother, it, uh, if you don't know what that means. Um, it's just, uh, she, she lost her son in combat, and um, anyways, uh, that was a few years ago, but since then she's taken great interest in fighting and supporting veterans and has been supporting my, my mission and my team's mission to fight veteran suicide greatly and has uh, been working kind of side by side with uh, the public affairs people that have been <coughs> helping me push this mission out um, in their free time and basically shout the issues across the nation to gain awareness and to get attention to try to change minds and to try to raise money. Um, she, she's uh, not only has helped me shout my voice across the nation 
uh, in a way she's kind of adopted me as another one of my mothers. Like I said, she hasn't been alone. She's worked alongside people like John Harlow, Bob Reiner, and Taz. Tazan, oh, I was going to say Taz. Apparently someone fixed this for me. Tazania Mokmutan, um, to ensure awareness and a call for, for action on the issue that veterans, veteran suicide has been spread nationally. I'd like to thank all of them as well. Uh, the public affairs team here at NADIC, I got them little plaques and wanted to recognize them publicly, but they wouldn't have it. So I gave it to each, each to each of them personally. I just know that they have uh, been a huge part of my mission and purpose and uh, my team's mission as well. They've been helping us out greatly. Um, sorry, this is hard to keep on getting distracted. Um, I'd also re like to recognize Mrs. Beverly Franklin, who's sitting right next to Ann Atkins. She's another mother that I've adopted, even if she doesn't really fully understand that. Um, she, sadly, she's a gold star mother as well. Her situation is a little bit different. She, um, she lost her son, a decorated multi-combat tour veteran, uh, to suicide. It's taken a lot of personal courage for her, but she's been a strong advocate for fighting against veteran suicide and speaking up about it. It's been a catalyst for change by having the courage to speak about such a horrible, horrible thing that happened to her and her family. And, and just, I'm just proud of her. Thank you for being here. Pain, pain you've endured and advocated is a, a strong motivator to me and many others to keep fighting and doing what we do. And thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank this weird bald guy in the front row um, <laughs> with an awesome goatee. Uh, he's my first non military friend I made here in Massachusetts, uh, Dr. John Yakamini of Tufts. He, uh, he's one of some sort of, I don't fully understand what he does, he tries to explain it to me, but me being a blow in our life can't comprehend. Uh, he's some sort of department head regarding immunology and all kinds of cool stuff like that. It's like Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of shooting guns competitively, and John was the guy that got me tied in to be able to do that here in New England, which I thought was impossible. <laughs> Through the New England shooting community, Harvard Sports Club, Metro West Tackle, where I met a, a bunch of great people like Christopher Tessier, Michael Jaffe, um, Greg Hayes, Michael Kreitzer, and um, too many more to list. Most importantly, John. Yakumini is one of the reasons I'm standing here today. Uh, due to him knowing other good doctors, he was able to put me in the hands of, uh, put me into a higher level of care than I needed at the time during one of my treatments. And uh, I very likely could have turned the tide in my, and saved my life. So thank you, John. I'd like to go on a three-page dialogue to thank uh, First Sergeant Gimel, but he would choke me to death. Uh, so I'll just keep it short for him and I'll talk about him later. He's done everything that a great First Sergeant should do and more. I've had zero worries knowing that he'd be in charge of the detachment for the majority of the time that I've been here um, due to my treatments and recoveries. So literally like half the time, I mean, He's, he's probably been done more command time here than I have. He should be getting the guy done. Um, he took care of me in addition to this, and uh, his conversations, mentorship and advice get me sane, and I'll say the rest for, for later. It's, you're my brother. I'd like to also thank uh, the former aide de camp former Captain James Johnson back there. I had a seat saved for you up here. 
but I know you don't like to, you like to, you like to be the gray man and hide out. Anyways, um, I have no idea why James cared so much to help me out. This guy would visit me often in the hospital, and whether he was visiting or not, he'd go sometimes an hour and a half out of his way around trip every day for months to go to my house and take care of my dogs. Just something as simple as that to ensure that he was looking out for me. And uh, whether it was shooting guns, seeing movies, making road trips, uh, swinging by the office, just BSing or whatever, he was always taking care of me. So I just like to thank him publicly. Um, okay. I need to drink of water quick. As many as, as much as people say it isn't all about me, I, uh, I'm being propped up by many, many people. I'd like to thank all the leaders, staff, scientists, engineers, analysts, administrators of the Natick Soldier System Center and the Natick Soldier Research Development Engineering Center. Despite the fact that uh, you're all great for what you do, bringing the best technologies possible to the fight to give war fighters an unfair advantage over the enemy, despite the fact that what you do directly and indirectly saves lives of soldiers and increases their ability to win wars for this nation, despite all that, you never cease to amaze me individually. It seems as every single one of you took the time to talk with me shake my hand and make me smile at one time or another. I'll genuinely miss each and every one of you. And more. My uh, civilian friends and veterans don't work here. They took the time to be here and travel. Um, they took the time to travel to be here and see me through this. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Mr. Major Cox. You know, he's both both a civilian and a uh, and a National Guard major. He's got wears two hats. Thank you for being here, Shannon, Denise. Very great to see you guys. Al, the big big old scary beard. Um, ben, it's amazing to see you here, man. You look great. Um, Christine, Heather, Marvin. Is that did I see the Paul is here today. So. Oh, there you are. Awesome. Um, they're they're just down the road. They're my, they run my favorite restaurant. And we talk all the time. Anyways, um, too many more to list. If I try to list them all, I'll go into some sort of advanced psychosis. Most of you are part of one of the greatest things I've done and will ever do. Um, something that was great and successful because of people like you. Mr. Carew, I think I saw you here. Yeah. Sure. Anyways, uh, Mr. Carew is, uh, Paul Carew is a great American. Um, he's always breaking his back to help out the veteran, help out local veterans. Uh, good to see you here, Chris. Love you like a brother. I'm great, you know, grateful to see, uh, all oh, too many supporters of our team, Team Minuteman, of Care the Fallen here too, and too many to list. I regret, I regret that I uh, didn't invite everyone that I've ever talked to in New England, but I could never remember that many people. Um, my permanent party soldiers. Oh, there you go. All right. What you have done and continue to do amazes me. You have pulled for more. You've all, you, sorry, you've all been pulled from uh, conventional units or other units in the Army to this strange, unique assignment. Being the strong leaders and non-commissioned officers that you are, you've figured it out and excelled. Anything that our <coughs> unit can take credit for is all because of your efforts. You've cracked the code of problem solving and working without micromanagement. And I commend you all on your professionalism. And also, I'd like to thank the human research volunteers. You all volunteered to serve the nation at a time of war. You volunteered for crazy and wild experiments. You're all two-time volunteers because you, want, because you want to make positive impacts in this world. 
The experiments and studies here would not provide the data and understanding to save lives and make our force the most capable, fiercest fighting force on the planet without your efforts. It has been a bizarre experience to command as hundreds, as hundreds of you have filtered through here in the years. I'd like to think that I've had the opportunity to inspire and develop you at all and develop you all at some point or another, but it seems I, as if I never had any of you long enough to do all that I wanted to do. Further, I have no doubt that you stand ready to fight and may be called upon to fight very soon. Stay focused. Remember that you're no longer children. You proved through graduating basic AIT and working here that you're adults. Never forget that your profession is a serious one. One where you are charged to risk your life to protect the nation from the evils of this world by any means, to include killing bad people. Stay resilient. The coming, the coming years will undoubtedly be hard on you. If, if I leave you with only two words that you remember, remember this, never quit. I'd like to thank every non-commissioned officer and commissioned officer that has developed me as a leader throughout my years. I'd like to thank my peers who have assisted in who have assisted and looked out for me throughout the years. Most importantly, I'd like to thank the many soldiers that I've, that I've had the rare and distinct opportunity to lead. They have developed me the most. More than that, they have, they have amazed me more times than I could count. All the people that I've served with, on top of being extremely skilled at, the profession, at their profession of arms, each of them human beings, humans with families, Humans with surprising talents, ranging from guitar playing to singing to being published writers, poets, surfers, mountain climbers, art that I have never mastered, but I had the chance to try. I'll never experience this this uh, chance really again. While it is relieving to know that I no longer have to be concerned about letting my soldiers down, it is it is saddening that I will no longer be there to witness the, the worldly, impressive feats, impressive feats that such groups of soldiers can accomplish despite the worst of conditions. I thank the fathers, mothers, wives, husbands, sons, daughters, and friends of each and every soldier that I have led. Even if you didn't trust me, you tolerated me. I have one more person to thank out of that long list. I know it was a long list, but I'll hold off for now. After four years of Army, sorry, after four years of Army ROTC, which in retrospect seemed a little more like running around the woods and playing Army, um, jumping out of airplanes and power plane presentations, I put on the gold bars of a second lieutenant in 2005. I did infantry officer basic and mortars leaders course, despite my best multiple attempts and mile long lists of excuses. I never earned that ranger tab. Uh, when my brand new wife, Samantha, and I arrived to Hawaii, I requested to be transferred to the deploying brigade and was assigned to 227 Infantry, the Wolfhounds, as the chair lieutenant. Soon, soon enough, I had, an, I had a light infantry rifle platoon and was deploying to Iraq. I experienced a lifetime of lessons in a period of 14 and a half months. At the end of the day, I know that we left that place a much better place than we had found it. The question you, you ask yourself nightly continues to be, was it worth the cost? And did I, did we do everything that we could and do it the right way? I still don't have those answers. Despite the hardship, the majority of us came back alive. We lost many. At this time, I had, still, I, I had been in command of my second platoon, uh, specialty platoon and mortar platoon. I went to combat with uh, one platoon as one person, and I came home with a different platoon as a different person. I have no doubt that you're all familiar with my story, so I'll keep this part short. It was a hard deployment for everyone in task force. Well, found some didn't make it back. Many came back physically damaged, and many more came back damaged in other ways. I was no exception. I came back recovering from a mental state so severe 
that it nearly ended me. Back then I had to seek help covertly, in secret, as it would have ended my career otherwise. It was a long process, but taking care of myself provided me the resilience I have today. That resilience that is necessary, necessary to not only fight for my own life against cancer, but to fight for the lives of our, of our countless suicidal veterans of today. My experience in the infantry burned me out. I was a bitter junior officer who wanted a way out. I had zero desire to become a company commander in the infantry given the unique examples of leadership that I experienced. I know that is bitter and sounds unprofessional, but I had to say it. This is true. For me, it was either resign my commission or accept my branch detail to the adju adjutant general corps. I know it may seem strange to comprehend, but all I ever wanted was to be an infantry platoon leader. I was fortunate enough to get that twice. I guess I hadn't thought out the rest very well. I didn't know that the Army was lacking good officers in the AG Corps. And uh, maybe I could try to be one of those. That affected my personal decisions. A good AG officer can improve a soldier's assignment, pay, promotion, record, and um, all things that can greatly improve or destroy morale of the unit. And seeing that this was such a problem, I, I wanted to fix it because uh, I saw that our soul, I feel that having witnessed in the combat arms, I, f I felt that our soldiers deserved better. I was confident that I could use my experience and attitude to do, do my best to improve it. As a leader, I saw a big problem. Enthusiastically, when I see a big problem, I see a big opportunity to have a bigger positive overall change. So I tried my hardest. After six months at a career course, a captain's career course, I didn't learn where I learned nothing because they were studying this uh, computer system that never got implemented <laughs> that they spent millions of dollars on. It's called Dimers. You know about that. That's what I learned in career course. <laughs> so I go from infantry to uh, a system where I learn how to do, solve all the world's problems as long as I got the system to my unit and that I didn't know anything. Uh, so I managed to uh, negotiate and kind of drug deal my way into, into my assignment as being the personnel officer S1, the first time the Special Forces Group ever worn. Ended up, after uh, getting developed a lot by my NCOs and crushed by my XO on a daily basis, it was a great man, um, still demanded high standards. Eventually, I became the king of paperwork, kept working long days, and uh, did my best to fix broken systems and broken files. In that assignment, I had great power, flexibility, and trust. And trust. A bunch of meat-eating, trigger-pulling Green Berets grew grateful that I was there because their paperwork was better than it had been before, at least most of them. I deployed with them to the same general area of northern Iraq for eight months that I was as that I went to as a uh, platoon leader. It was amazing to see how much that area of Iraq had improved over the two years that I had been away. The Iraqi security forces were better equipped, better trained, and more independent. Violence in general, terrorism and mayhem was down. The streets were cleaner. The, burnt, the oil pipelines weren't burning. It felt good to see that. Eventually went back to the States and worked for the rest of my assignment. The last year I was with the group, my health was declining. I didn't know why. And I didn't even bother to figure that out. It was my physical health. So, contrary to um, my belief that you should take care of yourself mentally, I just said, you know, just suck it up physically, no big deal. Anyways. So, um, instead of figuring out my health, I went to Sears, Sears C School, 
Um, it's a survival school. This is uh, my final act of the group. Um, Sears is a school that teaches you how to survive out in the woods, run around so you don't get caught by the enemy, um, exercise the code of conduct if detained by unfriendly forces, and escape captivity. Uh, according to some, it is arguably one of the most mentally and, and psychologically stressful courses offered in the Department of Defense. Uh, given my history of treatment, I went there to validate the resiliency that I had mentally, gained through therapy and counseling. I completed the course and got my, valida my validation, which was very important to me. I was extremely proud of that, um, especially since I had cancer at the time and didn't even know it that I went through serious school with cancer. Um, there were two lessons that I took from that experience that have served me well to this day. One is be resilient and never quit, and two is keep the faith. At Sierra, it meant that you keep that, that you are to keep faith in your comrades and faith in your nation, faith that people are going to come and save you and look out for you. It is ultimately ensured that I that I always bounce back up one more time than I fall down, and that I will, and I'll, and that I will keep faith in people in general, even when some disappoint. <coughs> I keep faith that our people are generally good. This has allowed me to keep a positive attitude. Immediately after that assignment, it was time for me to be reassigned to Natick. Again, I look back at my three years with this Special Forces group with fondness and nostalgia. Uh, the wife and that I decided that it was either Istanbul or Natick. Um, she told me Istanbul and it wouldn't be a good idea because of our dogs. Um, who we kind of treat like our own children. So we came to NAIC and um, I took command of HRDD in February 2012. I had a great wingman at the time, Sergeant First Class Sickles, as my first sergeant for the first few months. My cancer kept getting worse. I would spend some of, them, some of my nights for that, those first four months curled up in a ball, the fetal position from pain. Still, like a dummy, I ignored my pain. Mm. Again, I preach to veterans to get help if they aren't feeling right in the head or the heart, but here I am ignoring the same advice for my physical pain. Eventually, my large intestine burst from a large tumor, and the pain forced me to go to the emergency room. Between leading HRDD, trying to make things happen by working uh, with people like Landry and Load Carriage, Mike, man in uh, the soft office, training and maintaining the HRVs. I've spent, since the time, I've spent the time since May 2012 getting surgeries, chemotherapy, checkup scans, recovering, etc., etc. How many of each, I don't know, I lost count. I've seen amazing things done here, though, at that time, through the, uh, in the aerial delivery director at Combat Feeding, the low carriage lab, Combat Basin Logistics. Force modernization, the UAV guys, the Operational Forces Interface Group, and I've seen a lot of good people doing good things and hard work and good technologies and products and knowledge coming out of this place. It's been amazing to see, to be a small part of all of these fantastic efforts where dedicated and intelligent people have accomplished much. Can you all still hear me? Or am I fading off? I, I, I apologize. <coughs> I'm trying to read this as fast as I can. I know it takes time, so. Just to break the ice. He's got a funny, clean joke. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, HRV, you guys should, should have one. Have one. All right. No one has a funny, clean joke. It's horrible. <laughs> All right. back, back to my speech. All right. I'm going to miss fishing lessons from the bass master over there himself, Sam Newland. This deep discussion with Mr. Cam about politics and life and weird stuff. <laughs> I'll miss poker and house parties with Rob Luskies. I'll miss dinner with the Lopez's. I'll miss fun conversations at the club with Daly, the staff, and so many others. Through all this, I've been supported greatly by so many here in my extra extra okay, let me try that. I've been supported by so many here in my 
extracurricular philanthropic endeavors. I guess I was head of the source when I wrote this. Um, <laughs> my soldiers, Liz, Donna, Darren, Kristen, Leanne, etc., etc. I'll never forget the driving. I mean, you guys have just been hugely supportive to everything we do. For one uh, random thing I had to mention, I just never, I'm never going to forget the drive and determination of uh, Lieutenant Heavens over there. Who, uh, she's done a few rut marches and usually ends up cracking her foot or something. But this last one she did 52.4 miles with a moon boot and a crushed foot. Uh, but she kept on pushing and um, she did it for a good cause. I, I just think that's awesome to see from a leader. Okay, knowing that my cancer is incurable and that my days in the army are running short, I had to find myself a new enduring mission to maintain purpose, drive, and sanity. I have found that to be truly rewarding and fulfilling. The army and the VA have made their decision. My cancer makes me unfit for duty. While I, while I will be taking care of my retirement, it is time for me to go. It is time to make room for an officer that is fully capable of the things that I am not. I cannot deploy. I cannot run two miles, etc. These are the things that all soldiers must be able to do. It is not fair to the soldiers to be led by me in my condition. They richly deserve someone who is physically capable of leading them in combat in a worst case scenario. The mothers, fathers, wives, husbands, daughters, sons, and friends of these soldiers deserve that these soldiers are led by someone as such. The responsibility and standards of command are not light, they are unique. I have been honored and humbled to have had the distinct privilege to do so to this point. I fondly look forward to my future. I look forward to growing a thick beard of a thick head of hair and a big bushy beard until my wife has the authority to make me shave it off after one year from retirement date. <laughs> um, I look forward to sleeping in. I look forward to make, having more time to focus on my new mission uh, in fighting veteran suicides. I will, I will keep fighting for them as long as I am fighting to stay alive and will continue the furthest I possibly can. I will continue to beat the, beat the statistical timelines that I've already beaten I will continue to defy my doctor's recommendations and ruck as many miles as I physically can take, one foot in front of the other. Every single day from this day on is a gift. Use them wisely, because I will. To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Steve Prefontaine said that. Fido. I never thought that I would see this day where I wore the rank of a field grade major, field grade officer as a major. Uh, this means that I obtained the highest rank in the army of, of my bloodline. Uh, it makes me happy to know that this will make my brother, mother, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends smile and have pride in me. I only wish that I had the capacity to execute the duties expected of this rank. With my newfound mission and purpose, and with the thousands of battle buddies that I have attained through the course of my journey, I have no doubt that I'll be able to execute duties of a higher responsibility. Similar, but not the same. Regardless, as a retired soldier, I'm a soldier for life. I intend to live my life to the end of my days by our value system of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I may be giving up my active status, but I'll never give up on those values. I will continue to do everything that I can to make the number 22 smaller. Now lastly, and most importantly, I want to thank and recognize my beloved wife, Samantha. I was the creepy upperclassman that sniped her up on her first day of college. <laughs> I helped her move in the very first day and swindled her into a date immediately. I've never looked back since then. 
Um, today, we have been married for nine years, six months, and one day. We have been together for nearly 11. Um, I've never looked back. She has quietly been by my side or supported me in my missions behind the scenes in all of the times. We still go out on dinner and movie dates, never go to sleep without kissing first and exchanging I love yous every single day. She has put off so many of her personal goals and aspirations to follow, support, and, and uh, be close to me. I know she did this because she loves me and she does not regret it, but I feel guilty for having allowed it. She was there when I got home from deployments on leave or for good. She was there to see me off on every early morning and had me dinner at each late return during garrison life. She would get me out of bed to experience the greater things in the world, the beaches, the mountains, the cruises, the walks, and so much more. She would listen to me vent about the hard days and was always providing comfort. She held me tightly and listened without judgment when I discussed the darkest moments that I lived from my deployments. She supported and saw me through therapy. She allowed me to gain my resilience. She handled all the things I was too frustrated to do by the time I got home. The bills, the taxes, the maintenance, the bureaucratic paperwork of the civilian world. Um, she's the smartest person I know. I don't even need to Google. Average people Google it, but I say it. <laughs> um, which means she was always there to correct me when I slip. You know, it's not always a good thing. She never get, lets me get away with uh, bull um, stuff and bull to the standards I should expect. She has been there bedside at all my surgeries, recoveries, chemotherapies, etc. She couldn't stand having a nurse come into our house and take care of me by providing okay care. She's a perfectionist and she wanted to provide me better care, so she learned how to do it better than the home care nurses. She would probably make one of the best nurses around if she could ever tolerate random strangers other than myself. <laughs> She's stuffed axe wound, sized wounds with steel, oh, sorry, with uh, gauze, shoved needles in my chest, drawn blood, injected chemicals, kept track of my many, many medi medications, etc. It's literally been a full-time job where she ensures that I don't pass out, fall down the stairs, hit my head, drives me everywhere I go. Uh, she just takes care of me. She's lost uh, many friends with each of our moves. It's been very hard on her. This is not unique to her. This happens to a lot of military wives. Yet, we remain each other's best friends. Most of all, she knows that I am dying. She knows things are going to get worse. She has maintained... She has maintained unrelenting courage and love. sticking with me through all of it. Further, not only has she had the compassion to share my limited time, she not only supports the countless hours I dedicate to my mission in the interest of fighting veteran suicides, but she assists me in my efforts. She knows how important it is to me and how much more important it is to those veterans who need help. I am not sure how I ever convinced her to settle for a love like me, but I feel like I've won the lottery every day that I get to see her face. My coming time will be focused on ensuring I'm doing everything I can to take care of her and guarantee her and guarantee that she is taken care of when I pass. I believe I have figured most everything out. In the very unlikely event that Sam asks for help, she prides herself on being self-reliant with something after I pass, please find her an expert to help her out. 
She's a very humble person, does not like attention of any sort. I guarantee I have probably talked too much about her and angered her or upset her in some way, so I'm going to end this here. We're very excited to move to our new home in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, which is close to her hometown in Chicago. Uh, we're very excited to uh, be close to family again, not to face any more military moves after this next one. Get to enjoy a real squeaky Wisconsin cheese curds, deep dish pizza from Lou Maldotti's, uh, which is, you still just can't get up here. It's not the same, and they ship it to you free stride. And, uh, <laughs> however, uh, Wisconsin cold is a different story altogether. Okay. There's not a single old person in this room that I would not go out of my way for. If you ever need me, I will do my best. My cell phone is and will always be 706-536-6146. Again, that's 706-536-6146. I pick that phone up 24-7. If I don't answer right away, I will call you back. Please don't call me to talk about your dog's new pink neckerchief because I don't care. <laughs> but if you ever need help, I'm there to, uh, oh, and you can't get it elsewhere, I'm going to be there to help yeah, each and every one. You all treat me better than I have deserved. My experience has been honoring to me. I feel as if I have been turned into a false idol of sorts. I am not that. I could write a series of novels about the many times that I have chosen the easy wrong instead of the hard right. Like you, like all humans, I am fallible. Do not call me the H-word, like so many of you have. My experiences here have been humbling. So many have supported my command. So many have made concessions so I could get by. So many have protected me and supported my mission. For the most part, I have not requested it, but you provided it out of the goodness of your hearts. My condition is unique, and I will handle it the best that I can. I do not pity myself, so please do not pity me. I want to repeat this. Facing adversity is as simple as placing one foot in front of the other. Choose to be happy. Choose to be positive. Every single day from this day on is a gift. Use them wisely. Fido. Thank you for attending today. I hope I haven't taken too much of your time up. Please join us at the All Ranks Club at the point for refreshments. Food is available and provided by, the, by my soldiers. Please provide them donations that go to the Better Opportunity for Single Soldiers. Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers Boss Program, which is a program that gets the soldiers out of the barracks on the weekends to do fun and exciting things. I care deeply about the soldiers, and you should too. There will be more discussions. I have a couple things I need to give out. I'm sure others have things to say and do down there. Your attendance would mean uh, something to me. Okay, I need... Um, One, one more thing, I guess I said a lot of final things. As my final official statement here, I'd like to say something to the Navy Soldier System Center people I said when I first got here during my chain of command. It was something I learned in the last unit and something that I've seen reinforced since I've been here. The soft imperative number one is Humans are more important than hardware. Do everything you can to empower the soldier to be the most effective in battle. Thank you. to sing uh, for you and for Carrie the Fallen and uh, I just want to thank you for the opportunity of doing so because uh, as long as I'm able I'm going to continue to sing for um, 
our military and our heroes. So thank you for your service and thank everyone here for your service. And I just thought I wanted to sing this uh, for you once more. Although this one I don't think I've sang for you. I'm not going to do the anthem. It was done earlier, so. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. Through the mountains to the prairies, on the oceans, wine with her. 